Uh, so yeah, it's a good, quick uh, presentation about the idea of combining the DTPM with the thermal framework. So DTPM stands for uh, Dynamic Thermal Power Management. So today what we have is uh, this kind of architecture. So we have CPU frec, the frec, um, in order to send commands to this uh, subsystems, we use the PMQS, which does an aggregation of the, the request. If there are different um, clients asking for different things. And then we have the power cap uh, framework where the DTPM is built on top, built on top of. And um, then we have CPU frag cooling device and the defrag cooling device. The, um, if we provide an energy model, then the defrag and the CPU frag cooling devices can use this energy model to do uh, mitigation thanks to the power, alloc uh, power um, intelligent power allocator we have in the, in the thermal framework. And also the DTPM is using the energy model if it's available or uh, also it's planned to use other kind of uh, mechanism if they are available and if we can give the information about how much uh, power consumption we are doing or, and what is the power limit. Um, so today what we have is we have code duplication and uh, also the algorithm between the CPU frec and defrag cooling devices because those are doing um, power consumption computation. So they are trying to, they are trying to read how much power we are consuming and then it sets the power limit. In order to do this power limit, it computes the performance state and then it sets the performance state through the DevPM QS. And DTPM is actually doing uh, the same math, except that um, at the end, what we have, we have is this interface, CFS interface with the user space where we can directly act on the power and setting and getting the, the, the power. So um, we have this mixed, um, um, so there is a, mix uh, for CPU frec and def frec. So if the energy model is not available, we go directly, we provide the state. And if we have the energy model, well, then we use and the power locator, then we use the power, the, the power computation to do the request and having the state. So it's the mechanism is the same for, uh, for def frec and for CPU frec. The DTPM is doing the same thing. So, um, it's computing um, from the power, it's computing the state, corresponding state with the energy model, and then do a request with uh, the state. So the idea here is, is instead of having this uh, duplicate things, we can say, okay, CPU frec and defrag cooling devices uh, does no longer have any power computation inside, and we move that inside a dedicated power cooling device. Um, CPU frec and def frec cooling devices would be, can, will be used only by the stepwise governor, while the power cooling device will be used by the power allocator governor. And this one can use directly the DTPM where it's an unified interface. And because it's an unified interface, uh, what, whatever, uh, what, whatever the device we have, which is capable of being, uh, doing power capping, uh, we can be able to access directly with this power cooling device. So we have a generic cooling device being able to handle any devices using this DTPM uh, framework. Um, also, the DTPM is uh, planned to evolve in the future because there is a hierarchical description of the different devices, so we can uh, allocate a budget uh, on the parent of uh, the group of, of a group of devices, and then um, by setting this uh, power constraint, this power limit on the parent, then all the, 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 the children uh, will uh, um, change their power in order to always con um, comply with the parent's constraint, where the sum of their power is no, no, never greater than the the parent uh, limit, power limit. So that means 
um, we can easily just plug for a thermal zone with a group of devices and let that um, um, handle the, 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 the cooling uh, easily with this power balancing. Um, the power cooling device will be also very simple because we will just have a couple of, well, basically it's a couple of functions, which is in get and set power. Uh, there is no state, it's just get and set power. And also the DTPM is um, returning the effective power limit. So if you ask, for example, for a certain power limit and the, the, the step between the different performance states, uh, we are right in the middle, then the, um, it won't make sense to, to put on the upper state for this uh, upper performance state but on the lower performance state. So we have a remaining uh, power and DTPM is returning this value. So we can have um, the information about still uh, what available power we have. So we have uh, more accurate um, information. Yeah, so that's it. That's the idea about um, separating clearly what is power related and what is not power related, where we are, we, um, we could only act on the different devices through the state. Does it make sense? Um, hi, Daniel. This is Lukas. Uh, yeah, that makes sense, uh, but I would have a few questions um, because power allocator, uh, it, it, as it's now, it uses the temperature sensor and it operates only on one thermal zone, while I think your DTPM um, would operate like on a few thermal zones at once, like uh, in abstract, of course, not uh, not in a, in a code, but how you would uh, how you would be able to uh, to provide this power cooling device to to IPA? Would that be with some kind of a power sensor, or we still so have to rely? Yeah, it's, it's not correlated actually because um, you, the the. The DTPM act not per sensor, but it will act on the devices where uh, they are power capable. So you can set and get the power. Mm -hmm. um, the other side, you you ha can have uh, a group of devices and a group of sensor representing that. And on, there are some work to, done today to to do the aggregation of these uh, sensors to have uh, just one uh, one sensor. Yeah, yeah grouping yeah. all, all of this uh, using um, this, uh, well, it's already defined in the DT. So that's some ongoing work today. So effectively, we can have a, a sensor aggregating all the other sensor, which is reflecting the devices associated with those sensors. And then yeah. so, plug that with the power allocator. Yes, so this is, so why I'm asking, because from my perspective, what we have today in power allocator, um, there are some limitations. For instance, we have only one temperature sensor for the whole zone, uh, and we monitor only that sensor. So we are not able to check, for instance, per cluster temperature. We can only get, uh, for instance, SOC temperature. So that's one issue. Uh, but I can see with this new design, it might be solved better or with the work now ongoing with the hierarchical sensors with, with some average temperature maybe. So yeah, we, we could discuss this new design. So there is one issue. The, the other issue currently in power allocator, we don't have uh, information about what's the maximum possible frequency set from the user space for that device, because that's the max uh, power budget for the device. Then based on that, we split the budget across the devices. Um, so there, there are a few 
missing features, I would say, uh, in Dev Freak and then in the CPU Freak cooling device currently, which the, the new power cooling device might might have those features. And the third issue now with the power allocator, which also uh, is heavily uh, based on the CPU free cooling device missing feature is there is a new uh, utilization signal that we try to derive the input power. So we assume that the power, the average power for the CPU actually depends on the utilization and the frequency at that moment when we are sampling, while this is not true. So the power estimation is wrong, sometimes by quite a lot. Yeah, and right. Uh, we, I think we, yeah, 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 that's, that's correct. That's uh, parts of, um, of the things we should work on to, to have a be better power measurement. Yeah, so I can see opportunity in this new power cooling device actually to to put more features in there. I have posted, I think, uh, V2 or V3 with the active stats to track better when the CPU is idle and where it's not, because that's a bit more accurate when comparing to the utilization signal. But for, for me, this new power cooling device might be better suited for the purpose of IPA, because we have currently quite a few limitations in the freak and CPU freak cooling devices. So it would be maybe good to, to, to have a list of those limitations. I can send you uh, on, the, yep. on the mailing list. And maybe we could uh, think about this design, the power cooling device. And then the, the backend as the DTPM, uh, it, it would be just consumed there, I assume. You will just set the limits uh, via DTPM. Just set values and instead of get uh, requested power, it will just do get power uh, okay. for this DTPM. So. And, 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 and I, this, mm -hmm. I, I think also the power allocator or governor could be a bit improved uh, thanks to that because um, as we have only, it's only dedicated on power, uh, we can be more accurate maybe on the on the mitigation yes and and also so i assume that dtpm will also feed the the stolen capacity into the thermal pressure to the scheduler so that will stay as it is but, um, but it depends on the energy model being accurate actually right well so that will be next topic yes true thanks rafael but uh, but currently, uh, you, you have seen the active stats probably a uh, few times now. We already have, even in, in a, a known workload, uh, but with some idle periods, we are not able to estimate correctly the power. With this uh, correctly derived energy model. So it's a bit uh, disappointing. Okay. Oh, so you you are saying that even if the energy model is yes, exactly, yeah, exactly. yes. then we then, we cannot, then you okay. then you cannot derive the power correctly because we we assume the frequency was constant for the last x millisecond because we are sampling current freak we don't have statistics uh, what was the frequency in that period let's say one hundred milliseconds so we don't take this into account plus we don't know those idle periods for each frequency in this past x milliseconds and that's why we can overshoot by quite a lot even a known benchmark workload like rt up with with a, a task which has some idle periods so that's why i see opportunity in this power cooling device to be a bit more sophisticated than the current cpu free cooling device with the util signal only and uh, a sampling right. of the current freak. Right. So you, you do you think it could be a replacement for the for the existing uh, CPU freak and the freak calling devices? Yes, definitely. The 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 whole part which is there uh, because of the IPA, uh, this can be removed then 
So it will be just the bare right. minimum for the stepwise governor. But this code is quite heavy uh, to track uh, or to 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 right. estimate this power correctly. Right, and I yeah, and it's not doing the the job. Yeah, no. Is, uh, no. Um, okay, so the direction will be to to to. Uh, Make the, the the power clean device work with IPA and the rest, uh, and, and remove the the code needed for that from the other yes. device. And, and, and I can start... that yes. that sounds good actually to me. So I can start uh, a mailing thread with those issues that I know the limitations that I currently have, and yeah, we can start talking about this design from on this power cooling device uh, perspective, how this could be solved and then combined with the DTPM. What do you think? Daniel? Okay. Yeah, sure. All right, sounds like a plan. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Anyone, any comments on this topic? Not really. Oh, all right. So we are we are done, I suppose. Okay. So now we have a break.